I'm really thankful for this opportunity to share the word to you. And I thank God, uh, I thank the Holy Spirit who brought us here. And then I just want to give thanks to Pastor Now Now who, who gave me this privilege to share. So tonight our topic will be the presence of God. Hallelujah. The presence of God is necessary for the believers and the Christians. The presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the real scripture portion which is taken from Exodus chapter 33 verses 14 to 15 first. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Hallelujah. The Lord said to Moses, who is the leader of Israelites, they are from the Egypt's exalt place, and then they're just going up to the promised land, Canaan land. On the way, so many Israelites are really um, forget about God, and they're just doing whatever they want, and they just worship, even idol worship is there. And God said to Moses, Moses, if I will go with you all, maybe on one, on, on the other hand, maybe on one time, I may destroy all of the lives of the Israelites. Because you guys are not good in my presence. So bad situations is there. That is why I won't be with you all. But the promise is the promise. I will keep a promise. And I don't go with you. I won't lead with you. I don't lead. Never. But the, the angels of the Lord will be there for the leader to the Canaan land, the promised land. When they hear this word, when they hear this news, they thought this is the bad news. Because... Moses said, to Jesus, uh, Moses said to God the Father, the Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us. Even it's the promised land, even it's a blessings day. I won't do that. I won't do that. I don't need the blessings, Lord. I need you. Hallelujah. I don't want the promised land, Lord. I need you. I want you. That's the desire of the Moses, leader of the Israelites. This is the passionate of the leader. And um, this is actually for you. Hallelujah. This is the word from God. Hallelujah. This is for you. If you're watching this, this is for you. We need the presence of the Lord wherever we are going. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, you need the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that presence will brought you the overcoming place, the succeed place. Even if your situation is not good, you will succeed. Hallelujah. 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 Because, because God is with you. Hallelujah. That God is the one who can do everything to be possible. He is the able God. He is the able God. Hallelujah. And then we can see in um, one verse, even he himself introduced to us Jesus Christ. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus never lies. Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He never lies to you. He never forget you. He never forsake you. He never leave you. He never let you go alone. Because he want to be with you. Why? He loves you. If we love somebody, we want to be with him or with her. 
until our life <laughs> die or until the days of our life. We want to be with him or with her. Just like that. As the same way, God loves you. God loves you. He cares for you. He cares for you. You know yourselves, but God knows just about you better than you. Because he is the one who is the owner. Hallelujah. He is the owner of our life. And the presence of God is the most valuable assessed of man under heaven. This implies that if God is present, it doesn't matter who is absent. If God is present, it does not matter who is absent. I want to repeat it. If God is present, it does not matter who is absent. It means if God is with you, if God is with you, does not matter what matter will come, what matter will you may face, what, what, what matter it may come, does not matter because God is with you. You will overcome all. Hallelujah. 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 And um, uh, I, ju I just want to share about this uh, really, really amazing. Um, when I think about God, God's presence uh, in one trip on an airplane, airplane, I just sat on there and then just uh, thinking about the presence of God is same as the, the kingdom of God, right? The presence of God is like the uh, is same as like um, the, the kingdom of God because the king of kings is ruled over there, right? The presence of God is also ruled over by the King Jesus Christ, isn't it? That's good. Then I just think about it. God can do anything, anything, everything God can do without you, okay? God can do without you everything. But as for us, as the believers, as the, as the Christians, even we are doing business or ministry or something else, without God, you cannot do anything. We can do everything. We can do even one thing, one small thing, we cannot succeed. Hello? Hello? <laughs> The stable succeed, okay? The stable succeed, it always comes from the Lord. The presence of the Lord. Without you, God can do everything. But the thing is, we, we have to thank God and we have to, uh, uh, thanks to the grace of the Lord, because He just led you to do. He just wants to do all things to be possible with you. There's the grace of God. Hallelujah. 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 We have to thank to Him because He wants to be with you and He wants to serve with you. He wants to do everything with you. He does not leave you there. Emptiness and loneliness will be gone because the presence of God is in everywhere with you. There are three kinds of presence we can see in the Bible. Number one, omnipresence. Omnipresence. When we read scripture portions which is taken from Psalms 139. Psalms 139 verses 7 through 10. Where, I, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I saddle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Omnipresence God. Number one. Omnipresence means the God who is in everywhere. He is in everywhere. If you go to your job, 
your working place, God is still with you. If you go to the church, God is still there. Amen. When you drive, God is, with, God is still with you. You want to take him care of you. Hallelujah. Because he loves you. No accidents. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then wherever you are working or running or doing exercise or going to the gym, <laughs> God is still there. Amen. Don't do shout shout. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> don't do shout shout. <laughs> God is still with you. <laughs> and don't think shout shout, okay? <laughs> do, not think, do not think too much because God is still there. Hello? Are you there? <laughs> you have to be. <laughs> you have to, man. <laughs> so number one, when we read the scripture portions, we can know that three kinds of presence. Number one, omnipresence. The psalmist say, if I go up to the heaven, God is still there. If I go to the sea, God is still there. Wherever I go, wherever I go, I cannot obtain the presence of God. The psalmist say, as the psalmist say, yet you and I cannot obtain the presence of God because He is there wherever you are. Wherever you are, hallelujah, God is with you. Emmanuel, God is with you. Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Inside of you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And number two is that, I'll go fast, okay? <laughs> number two is that, Indwelling presence. When we read the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 20, I'm, I'm going to read for you. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask my Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Mm. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I leave you. Because I live, you also will live. On the, that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. He's dwelling inside of you. When you receive Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of you. You're the temple of God. Hallelujah. As a Paul wrote it, don't you know that you are the temple of God? Yes, it is. We are the temple of God. And the Holy Spirit is inside of us. For what reason He is inside of us? For what reason He is dwelling inside of us? He wants to help you. All the people, everyone is needed to be helped. We need help. Even we do something, we don't know much. But we can pray to God. To help us. And the Holy Spirit would help you. If you didn't experience this, please believe and trust to the Holy Spirit. And receive His way. Receive His way in His presence. Lord, the Holy Spirit, lead me from here. Help me from here. Just pray, say a little prayer like that. And the Holy Spirit will reveal you, hallelujah, how to do, how to go, how to do everything inside of you. The Holy Spirit is ready to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is ever ready for you. Do you know what? You know what? Even the doctor, 
are not ready 24 hour service for you. But our God is 24 hour service in a day for you. He's ready to help you. Hallelujah. And He is also to guard you. He is dwelling inside of you. He will want to guard you, secure you. In these situations, you know it. Our circumstances is not secure, actually. But the things, one thing that you have to know is the one who inside of you, the one who dwelling inside of you is the one who can give you the inner peace. Inner peace, hallelujah. And secure, man. <laughs> Come on, church. He is security, man. <laughs> he want to guard you. Wherever you are, as the psalmist says, the valley of that, even I go there, I don't afraid because you are with me. He is with you. Even the situation is so bad, he is good. <laughs> he is good. He is good, still good, hallelujah. And he's, he just wants to uh, help you. To know, sometimes he just wanted want you something that you have not to do. He want you from the inner, because he's dwelling inside of you. When he speak, it's still small voice is coming out from your inside of you. The still small voice, it's in the voice, but it's powerful, man. It's powerful. It's really powerful. When he speak to you, when he speak to you, no one can hear you, but you hear it. And then, and then, something that Holy Spirit want to teach you and want to do something to do, wants you to do, no one, no one, no one, no one cannot know that you're inside in the voice. Because that voice just only you, you can hear because you are in mercy with Him. You are encounter with Him. So, they will not be like, um, they will not have inner peace to do that one. If, when you do it, uh, I, I want to give a testimony, like um, just only one, okay? Uh, before seven years ago, before seven years ago, the Holy Spirit leads me and speak to me. He spoke to me like um, to, uh, to open one school, the worship school. I heard about that, that voice uh, since I was matriculation students. But I don't know how to do and I don't know even how I don't know how to lead the young people. And I don't know how to teach the Bible study. And um, when I look to myself, when I look to my ability, I know myself very well. That is why I don't get any kind of, okay, any kind of, <laughs> I would say, secure, okay, or inner peace. I cannot do it. I cannot have it. But on one day, seven years ago, one of the prophets is come here and we have a prophetic seminar here. And he, he prophetic to me, prophesied to me on one day. And um, the same thing that God revealed to me to open the worship school is revealed by him. He confirmed me. He confirmed me. And then, that prophesied made me in a peace. That in a peace leads me to open the worship school. It's been seven years right now. Hello? Over 300 students are, get, uh, how to say, um, graduation, graduated from that school right now. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. This is a short testimony, okay? So I just want you to know some, sometimes 
you won't get an inner peace, please do not do it. Don't do it. Wait upon the Lord until you get an inner peace. Then the inner voice will come. Or the prophesies will come. Or something else, something else will come to get the inner peace. Hallelujah. And then you can do everything, whatever you want. Whatever God is revealing to you, you can do. Amen? There's the green light in the spiritual So You have to wait upon the Lord to green light. That's it. That is why I just want to know, I just want you to know that the inner peace is from the indwelling presence. Indwelling presence, Hallelujah. And the Lord Jesus himself is also inside of you. He is the prince of peace. Hallelujah. Shalom. 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 He is the inner peace. He is the peacemaker. He himself is peace. He is not only the peacemaker. He himself is a peace. The prince of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The inner peace will come from the indwelling presence. The last one. We call Shekinah. And um, when, when we translate it into the English word, manifested presence. Manifested presence. Manifested presence. It means... The Lord is with us. Whenever, whenever He wants to manifest that you are, uh, that He is with you, He do miracles. He do miracles. When we read the scripture portions, uh, Exodus chapter thirty-three verses um, eleven, you can see that. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face. As one speak to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young aide, Joshua son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know where, whom you will send with me. In this scripture portion, we can see that the Lord speak to Moses face to face. Face to face. Think about it. One of the scripture portions is saying that if you see the Lord's face, you will die on the spot. But this scripture portion is oh, face to face. The Lord is talking with Moses. As the friends are talking with other, then Moses, um, as one speak to a friend, as one speak to a friend, as a friend, we speak to one another, face to face, encounter, like this, same as God is speaking to Moses as one another, as a friend is talking. Hello? That's miracle. That's miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Old Testament. Church, in the Old Testament time, in the Old Covenant time, the, the only one who can speak to God is the high priest. But Moses is above high priest. Because he face to face speaking to God. Hello? But the good news is Jesus Christ, our high priest, new covenant high priest. Hallelujah. New covenant high priest. Make us holy and righteous. There's the right to face to face God, to encounter with God. To make a fellowship with God, to make intimacy, hallelujah, with God. That's it. That is why we have to know that this is miracle. 
that Jesus made for you. That's the real thing that, uh, which is uh, written by the book of the Bible. And then um, we, we can know that the noon sons, sons of noon, his name is Joshua. And Moses asking to God, Lord, you tell me to lead this, these people after me. If I will die, we're going to lead these people. He's asking to Father. He's asking to um, God the Father. And God do not answer from them. But the scripture is like this. Um, properly reading it. The noon sun, the son of noon, Joshua is still there in the tent. He is talking with God. When Moses go out from the tent, go out from the camp, go out from uh, fellowship time, he just finished his, uh, uh, his um, intermercy with God, encounter with God. He's finished it. He's just finished it. And Joshua did not finish yet. The thing is, whenever God chooses people, whenever God chooses the leader, He chooses in the presence of the Lord. Who is take time with God? Who is listening to God the Father? Who is with God? Who is anointed? Hallelujah. Who is prior God? Who take time with God. That's the way God is seeking to the people. To lead His people. That is why we have to know that this all scripture portions after that. What is needed to enter the presence of the Lord is decision. We have to make a decision. And recognize the presence of the Lord is with you. You have to recognize and we have to connect it with Him. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we are cleansed. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we are righteous. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we are holy to connect with Him. Hallelujah. We can openly enter the gates of heaven. We can openly enter the holy of holiest place. manifestations of the presence in Moses' life is still like that. And um, when they don't have food, God provides the food, manna food. And where there is no water, God pouring out the water from the rock. When there is no way, God prepare the way. Hallelujah. A new way. Even in the Red Sea, God do the way. New way. Hallelujah. And then in the David life, there's manifestations of the presence of God. Um, in David, David's life, we can see that. First Samuel chapter 16, or 13 and 14 said, When God anointed David by Samuel. Samuel is going to the Jesse house and he anoint um, David to be the future leader of Israelites. And then we can see on that scripture portion, God anoint David, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Depart from Saul. The Spirit of the Lord is depart from Saul immediately. Immediately. It means the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon David, and suddenly, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is depart from Saul. And then, one thing he had to do. From that moment, God is preparing to David to take action with, anointed, with, with anointing. He had to fight the giant one, okay? The boy David overcome the giant Goliath because of the presence of the Lord 
and by the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's because of the power of the presence of the Lord. He's a boy. He's just a little boy. He cannot do anything actually. But he has a power because of God is with him. That God is the one who can do powerfully. Hallelujah. That God is the one who is putting him and pushing him. And then, and then uh, the one who is uh, using him. The boy David overcome the giant Goliath because of the presence of the Lord. That's manifestations of the Lord in David's life that we can see. In your life, in your life, you may face the, you, you are facing, maybe you are facing the giant of debts. I don't know. You may face the giant lack of money, maybe. You may face the giant, which is like, um, Lack of joyful. You may face so many giants in your life. But the good news is the manifestations of God is upon you. From right now, hallelujah, you will overcome. You're going to overcome, hallelujah, because of the, uh, the, the power of the presence of the Lord is inside of you. It will manifest in miracles. In miracles. As Martha and Mary invite Jesus Christ to visit their house. And Jesus is going to their house. We can see in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 and 42. And we have known this story, okay? Make this story short. Mary is busy in the kitchen. Oh no. Mary is busy with God. Jesus Christ. He's at the feet of Jesus. He's talking with Jesus Christ. He's using his time, uh, her time. She's using her time with Jesus Christ alone. But Martha is very busy in the kitchen for the food to prepare for the lovely Jesus. Even she is very busy and she was angry because her sister is not helping her. Lord Jesus, she does not help me. I'm just alone, yeah. She complained. But the thing Jesus Christ is saying is that Martha, Martha, you needed just only one thing. Only one thing. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to, home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by, the, by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Tell her to help me. <laughs> but Jesus said, Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or need indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not to be taken away from her. The presence of the Lord is inside of you and everywhere. It will manifest sometimes by miracles, miracles in your life. But the things, just only one thing that we have to do is relying on Him to take a connection with Him. Take action, hallelujah. Hello? Take action, hallelujah. If you don't connect with Him, without God, 
you cannot do anything. We can do anything, sorry. We cannot do everything. But with God, all things are possible. Because the possible God, the able God is with you. He will help you. He will do favor. Hallelujah. He will do all things to be possible with you. He does not leave you there. He does not forsake you. He does not forget you. He is with you. As he said to his disciples, I will not forsake you as orphans. Our father is also with us. Our big bro, okay, big brother. Big bro Jesus is also with us. Who cares? Amen. <laughs> Hello. And the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of you. The Trinity God is with you. They are with you. Amen. Nothing to fear. Nothing to be afraid in your life. Whatever you may face, God is still with you. We will surely overcome by the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He will feel us. Hallelujah. Feel us more. Feel us more. Sometimes, you know, the Holy Spirit inside of you, that, that, that Holy Spirit, okay, that the presence of God, that indwelling presence will give you spiritual gifts sometimes. When you need, okay, when you need, the spiritual gifts will be overcome, uh, overload, okay. It will pour out, pour out, pour out, pouring out, pouring out. In times of your need, God is ready to help you, to overcome with you. Hallelujah. But the things that we have to do, just only one thing is, as Mary, we have to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and Lord the Father. That, what I have to do? You have to ask Him. And your big bro, Jesus Christ, is also with you. That's why you have to ask Him too. Big bro? <laughs> yeah, Roman said, Roman said. Big bro. Amen. He's the counselor. He's the wonderful. He's mighty God. He's a friend of you. Because he's, he's really famous friend of sinners. <laughs> As a friend of sinners, right? <laughs> we need him. We need his guidance. Hallelujah. We need his helping. So, not as a Martha, but as a Mary, we have to enter his Holy of Holies and into mercy with God. And then uh, sometimes taking place, prepare the way for him. Prepare the way to into mercy with him, encounter with him, and talk to God face to face. He will reveal you whatever you need. He will reveal you. And as I'm a worship pastor, he revealed me so many songs from there in the presence of God. Hallelujah. May God bless you all. Thank you.